Hello everybody and welcome to the next part of my Python 3 Basics series. Uh, in the previous video I was showing you guys how to install, set up, and begin to use uh, your Python installation. And in this video what we're going to be talking about is the print function. So the print function uh, for the most part is kind of like either, it's, it's mostly used just for debugging. Uh, at least the way I use it. Uh, most of the time I'm using it for debugging purposes to kind of tell me where I am in the script and then if you're maybe editing variables or making changes along the way you can print out the changes that are made just so you you can you know what's like happening under the hood um, so it, it's definitely one of the most common operations uh, and most common functions that you use within Python and it's what's called a built-in function so you actually you don't actually have to import anything so there are some functions that come with your quote-unquote vanilla installation of Python uh, but some of them need to be imported uh, like time or math and all this kind of stuff but print is used so frequently that you actually never have to import uh, the print function at all uh, in Python 2.7 the print function was a little bit different it didn't operate like a function or at least the syntax wasn't like a function uh, but in 3.3 it's a lot more like a function so let's go ahead and get uh, to it so an example of a print function um, or any function really is you call the function name and then in parentheses you put the functions parameters well with print the what you what print does is just outputs to console whatever you put in there and so you usually are gonna print a string but you don't have to print a string. But anyways, um, so let's just say uh, this is an example of print function. Okay, so we can save that. And um, typically in my tutorials, I do Control S to save, and I hit F5 to run. You can also obviously go File Save As or Run uh, and Run Module or File Save really. Um, but anyway, that's that. So when like stuff starts popping up, when I say okay, I'm gonna save and run it, and you didn't see my mouse do anything, that's why. Anyway, so I'm going to hit F5, it pops up, and you can see that it outputs, this is an example of print function. So pretty basic stuff, really. So now, let's pop back here, and let's talk about a couple of things real quick, because this is not only going to be the print function, uh, but also just some string rules and all that. So when you put something in between quotes, it's known, it's known or it's called, with, it's known as a string. <laughs> I'm having a very hard time saying that. Um, and you can either use single quotes or you can use double quotes. Now there are advantages and kind of disadvantages to each, uh, but for the most part, you'll see me use single quotes. But if you use single quotes and you try to do something like this um, and say, let's say we're going to the store, that doesn't work. And if you actually try to run this, you would say you would see this invalid syntax. There are a couple ways around this. One, you could encase everything in double quotes. Then the singular quote within that double quote uh, will be fine. So if we save it this way, we are going to the store. No problem. Um, so the next thing uh, that I'll show you though is if you really insisted on doing this, what if you did this? Um, even though this is a bad example because it's not really what we want, but like he's like let's say let's say instead you were saying uh, this is my uh, OCD coming out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hi. Oh my goodness. Anyway, save, run it, and if we pull this up, that worked, right? You saw how that worked. So it's like a different, even though. So like some people kind of think like double quotes just are. Uh, more powerful so they can encase single quotes but single quotes can encase double quotes it really doesn't matter but let's say you want to use single quotes but then you also want to say we are going to the store how would you do that well you use what's called an escape character which is the backslash not to be confused with the forward slash it's the backslash so typically it's going to be right above your enter key or your return if you're using like a super old computer <laughs> so so you can do that and what it does is it's called an escape character because what it's going to do is it's going to escape any sort of functionality of that character and just leave it as um, it's hard to say I'd have to revisit uh, the rules here but at least in Python in Python 2 I might be getting them confused but you've got like in Python 2 you have um, in, in Python 2 
you have what's known as Unicode, and you've got like 8-bit, whereas in Python 3, you've got text and just like data, right? And so they're, they're, like the rules are kind of different, but basically you're just escaping the functionality here of this. So when we run this, you won't see that nasty little backslash. So let's just go ahead and run it real quick. Um, and you'll see that, yeah, okay, so we're going to the store, and we were able to get away with it with single quotes. So um, that's just a couple of quick, quick things. Um, so you can do that, but another thing that you can do is what's called concatenation. So what that's going to mean is we're going to put two strings together. So we'll say hi, space, there. So when you use the plus sign in concatenation, it's going to put them directly together. So if you did just hi non-space, you would see hi there, like jammed together. So you would add a space, and obviously that's going to fix it. Let me pull this up a little bit. Um, the other thing, the other way that you can concatenate things is with a comma. And, I'll, and when you do that with a comma, it's going to add a space. So we'll run it again. Hi there. Now, the next thing that you can do is, like I said in, or, originally, is you don't have to have strings. You can have a number in there or an integer. So we'll run that. And this time, Python gave us a high five. So you can see that we're able to do that. But what if, what if, what if? if we had a plus there. Are we going to be able to do that? And is it going to take away our space? I don't know. Uh-oh. So we actually have a problem. It says that we can't convert an int object to a string object because what it's trying to do is um, it's taking the string and attempting when you use the plus to add it to the five. So conversely, what if we did five plus high? Run that. And now we can see unsupported operand for the integer because you can't add a string to an integer. So you'll see that, oops, I'm getting all over the place. Um, you'll see that there are actually different uh, errors that are reported, but it's pretty much for the same reason. You're trying to put two things together that just don't mesh. So um, th there's a couple of things that you can do. Obviously, you can use the comma, or you can use another built-in function, which would be something like this. So if you want it to still, you still want to get your high five, you want to add that space, but you really want a plus five there. You can use what's uh, called a string conversion here. And that's another thing that's built into Python. You won't actually have to um, import anything to do that. You can save it. You can run it. And here we have high five. Uh, by that same token, if this is, say, an eight, and you try to do plus five, it's still a string, right? A string eight. But you can convert that to say an int, save, run, and now you can see it actually printed out the mathematical operation of 8 plus 5. Now what if we did this? 8.5 plus 5 and we run that, you can see that it gets angry at us because the int 8.5 is not an integer. So the other conversion, since I'm showing you guys conversions, would be float, save that, run that, and that is okay. Everything is hunky dory. Python is not angry. So um, that should cover uh, just kind of like the basics of strings and concatenation and combining it with integers and floats and the conversions when you need to do the conversion and all that. So another time when you might need to use a conversion like this is if you're reading from a data file. Sometimes you might be reading that stuff in as a uh, string format. Same thing if you read from like a website or something like that. A lot of times it's going to come in natively as a string, and you'll you'll need to convert it out of a string uh, to an int or a float if it's a number. So anyway, uh, that should do for kind of like an introduction uh, to this kind of stuff and really the print function since that was the main goal. But really print and strings and conversions and more on ints and actually uh, mathematical you know actual mathematical operations because like stuff like the plus sign is a little bit um, has a, quite a few uses. Same thing with the minus sign. So anyways, uh, that's going to conclude uh, this video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.